it's finally on the market. So, welcome back to another Twisted Builds video. In today's video, we're going to talk about the engine sim. I'm going to show you how it works and talk about its pricing. So, this engine sim came out of uh, my desire to have an engine sim that would be as universal as I could make it at this time. So, this is powered by RD Stem, uh, mainly the Speedwino fork um, from Josh Stewart. So, how this works is this has uh, Arduino Nano on it that is programmed to output the crank and cam wheels from whatever you select for the output. Um, it doesn't have to be connected to the computer once set up. You can set it up with a USB connection and then just power it up and go. Um, then it takes a 12 volt input. So I've got my power supply. Again, excuse my messy workbench. But I got my power supply at 12 volts here. We're going to plug it in. This takes 12 volt power and ground. Um, then you got mainboard power, ECU powers, and key on powers. These are all toggle switches. So we're going to toggle this on, and you're going to see the crank and cam inputs come on. We've got all of these knobs, and I will talk about all of them in this video. First one is RPM input. The RPM will go from near zero, it's like 16 RPM, all the way up to 8,000 RPM. And you just literally turn it up and down to get the knob output how you want it, or the RPM how you want it. The next one is TPS, which is a TPS map sensor, uh, barometric pressure, wide band, spare five volt, or all zero to five volt sensors. The coolant temperature sensor, IAT, temp, IAT temp, and spare temp are resisted to ground. 99% uh, of the computers normally put out uh, a resisted voltage and they rely on the temperature sensor to resist it to ground so that is what this is simulating here and then you just literally turn the knob up and down as needed to simulate your uh, temperature sensors uh, map sensors the same thing barometric pressure wide band you guys kind of get the drill narrow band is a zero to one volt simulated output we also have a, a spare five volt and a spare temp we also have a push button input. That way, if you wanted to test scramble or anything like that, you can do that as well. Uh, this has the same style connector. It's a TE Super Seal connector that um, Holly uses. Uh, it makes it real super easy if you want to make plug and play uh, bench harnesses for the simulator. If you want to um, pretty much have like plug and play for different engine computers because you're developing on multiple different engine computers at a time you're it's like it makes sense for you to buy the extra connectors uh this unit sold comes with both of these connectors and 60 pins which is the 60 pin connector when you add the two together it also has screw terminals so say for instance you're gonna hook up a computer but you're not gonna do it all the time you just want to hook it up uh, all of these screw terminals come undone. They are all labeled. Let's we'll see if I can get this to zoom in. So injector 10 through injector 1, spare temp, spare 5 volt, which is those knobs. Uh, ignition 8 through ignition 1, then wide band, narrow band, you know, so on and so forth, right? They are all labeled through. Push buttons are connected to the push button. On the other side, we have injectors, possible injectors 11 through 16, the pulse of modulated outputs. And then the can high, can low, can FD, which you don't have to, like, you don't have to use this for CAN bus. I actually use, like, the way I've got mine wired up, because I do uh, GM P01 and P59 work, which is a VPW stuff. Uh, I actually have the VPW network wired through one of the CAN outputs, and then I can just tie it to the VPW network. There's no actual CAN bus on board. It's just allowing you to use this connector or that connector to that. Um, these right here are set up for my CAN bus logger, which is going to be going on the website in theory this week as well. Um, but it allows you to pretty much plug and play from there. It goes through the board and comes out to the main connector. So you have connections for my CAN bus logger, or if you want to plug in for equipment as well, it comes with all of these connectors. Um, it'll, it, they come with alligator clips for power and ground only. If you want to connect anything here, you will have to connect to them. Again, it, the connector looks like this. It just pulls out, pushes right in. And all these as well I, this is my personal one so i don't have that on my personal one right now they're actually tied with jumper leads and stuff like that so 
Uh, but yeah, so that is the gist of it. Um, what happens is the injector circuits for 1 through 16 are, like, these wires are fed resisted power. When you apply a ground to them, it turns on the injector LED. Um, the ignition ones, 1 through 8, when you supply 5 volts to them, um, they turn on the LED. And that's if you need LED indication. You don't have to have LED in indication. However, I've used this already to diagnose injector, or sorry, ignition coil outputs on, again, like a PO1, P59, uh, to test uh, different uh, things I do with them, stuff like that, make sure I have everything working the way I want to. Um, these also, so I talked about the switch, I think I talked about switches, but just in case, push button, I think I already talked about that main power, just turns power on and off to the board. Right, um, we have crank and cam voltage outputs. So the production units don't have three positions like this; they only have two. Um, this is this was kind of my prototype board, but yours is going to look relatively the same. These switches, as I said, are only going to have two, and you can kind of hear this one has three. Um, and the nano is soldered direct to board. Besides for that, it looks identical to this one, um, but. The crank voltage and cam voltage outputs. Some computers run 5 volt, some computers run 12 volt. So like P01 and P59 have 12 volt, or like LS computers have 12 volt crank and cam sensors. So I run those in 12 volt position. If you have like an E38, which is a GM fourth gen computer or some, something more modern that uses a 5 volt crank and cam signal, you just run those down to 5 volt, it'll output a 5 volt power. Make sure this is in the correct voltage switch because if this is in the wrong place, like if you have a 5, your computer takes a 5 volt sensor and you put 12 volts to it, you're going to fry it. Um, pulse width output, voltage output is the same way, 5 or 12 volts. So how the pulse width LED or LEDs work is they are provided either a 5 volt or 12 volt signal and you ground it to turn the LED on. Uh, that's how most uh, engine computers, most aftermarket computers work, is they will pulse width modulate the ground side. So um, if you need to simulate a five volt pulse width modulated feed or 12 volt, you can do that right here. Then these next three switches are kind of self-explanatory. I'm gonna turn this back on. So ECU power, this is pretty much your battery. So if, like, the, if your ECU was connected to battery, that's your battery switch key on power so ignition on you're giving the computer ignition on power that's that one there if you need a spare key on power there's another switch right there sometimes it's like ISPR circuits or stuff like that you need a secondary key on or switch on switch I provided one on this sim so uh, we're gonna go over quick and show you again excuse my mess but we are actually going to uh, connect the uh, USB to the board. It is connected to my laptop currently. And we're gonna bring up Artie Stone. Uh, I will actually show you. So you can go to uh, GitHub and grab this release and I'll actually link it in my website. There are three different file versions. You also can get the source code. Uh, Artie Stem EXEs for Windows the DMG is for Mac products, like if you have a Mac laptop, and the app image is for uh, guys running the Linux laptops. Um, I've pretty much switched over to Linux for a lot of stuff, however, my tuning laptop, because I'm running a lot of Windows programs, has to be on Windows. But anyway, I'm gonna show you what the EXE looks like. They all three look the same. So if you bring up RD Stem, it takes a second to load. And what we're gonna do, is I'm going to show you a couple different wheel options. This is very self-explanatory once it comes up. Um, if you bring this up, you'll see I have two available COM ports, three and eight. If you want to, you can leave that disconnected, bring the software up, and then plug in the USB, and whichever one shows up is the COM port you need to connect to. I know mine is eight. So I'm going to select that. Now I ship these units. I test every single one before I sell them. I'll make sure all the LEDs work. Make sure all the outputs work. Make sure the narrowband output works. All, everything gets tested before it leaves here. Um, with that said, I ship them with the GM24X LS1 
wheel selected and the boards are loaded with firmware. However, if being that this is based on an open source controller, if you wanted to change the source code, you can do that. And if you want to go back to the way I had it set up, you can bring up the Ardu stem and just upload the firmware here. You'll click that button and it will flash the firmware back into that controller. With that said, uh, we're going to connect to the serial port and it's going to talk to the Ardu stem the new, pretty much the Arduino nano board and bring this up. You can see how I've got RPM at zero right now. I can turn my RPM knob here and I don't know if I can get this all in one screen and you can see how the RPM is going up and down. Okay. So I'm going to leave it down at zero. Now you can ch use, um, I normally leave it and use potentiometer. You could also do fixed and sweep. If you want to do some reverse engineering, it's all there. You can also enable compression, um, you can enable ignition offset or compression offset. Sorry. Um, main thing is going to be wheel selection. So as I said, I ship them with the GM LS1 crank and cam. Um, you can grab, there is a whole list of wheels here that are available. So four, six, and eight cylinder, um, eight, like, uh, distributors, 62 crank and cam, um, 62 crank and half moon cam that would be like a 58x ls with the half moon um camshaft input uh 36 one like all these wheels are up op an option and i've actually added a couple to that so like the 58x and 4x that is the bosch 4x wheel that ls uh the gen 4 ls stuff uses um and then and like these code is also open source so if you need to add a wheel to this you can um, you just have to go into the code and add it if you are desired. But mo mo honestly, most of the wheels you're going to run into are supported already on this list. Um, you have to get pretty odd to get something that's not, um, supported. So anyway, so that is where you pick your wheels. And like, as I said, you've seen where I've got the GM LS1 wheel. I'm actually going to make it to where it l lights off the second cam. I I think this is the only wheel currently that has a two cam output. So BMW N20, it will not display this because it's a two wheel option. And you can see here, I'm gonna turn up the RPM where both cam and crank, or sorry, cam one and cam two are being used along with the crank sensor. So this does have two cam shaft position sensor outputs. That you can use with this. All right, so now we're going to grab the 58x 4x wheel and show you it's back onto that pattern. You can see the one, two, three, four, and, which is just this pattern going across. So I'll grab the GM LS1 wheel just to show you again. You literally just select it and it will change the wheel and you can see it's just flashing on and off evenly now so that is that that's how you change wheels um and grab whichever wheel you need for your um bench work so on to pricing so this unit is going to be available on my website uh you can go to twistedbills.com go to my store and uh purchase yours today uh this is going to be 425 dollars shipped to your door in the continental u.s um, if you are in Canada or an outside country, please email sales at twistedbuilds.com and I will get you a shipping estimate for this. Um, I've had com or I've had uh, questions come up like, hey, $425 is pretty expensive for an agent sim. Well, it, yes, that is true. And I am going to come right out and say I am the most expensive engine sim on the market today. Uh, bar none, this is the most expensive one you would buy. Um, reason being, this is the most feature packed you would buy. Uh, most of them don't come with 12 volt or 5 volt selectable cam and crank outputs. Most of them don't come with the ability to simulate 16 injectors. So that way if you have like staged injection, or something like that that you want to figure out on the bench where you're not going to hurt an engine at all this is the tool you would grab um if you want to figure out pulse of modulated outputs for like boost control or nitrous or anything like that like this with your engine being simulated so you're not going to hurt a physical engine 
this has the ability to do all that, including barometric pressures and spares against spares or five volt, uh, scramble input or trans break input or you know whatever you want to do. You can figure out a whole bunch of tuning stuff, and I already have on the bench without ever hurting an engine at all. So um, I built this personally for myself. Uh, I wanted a tool because I, I was in the market for an engine sim. And I started looking around and like all the engine sims didn't have all the features I needed for the work I was going to do um, and, and am going to do in the future with this. So because of that, I designed this. As I said, I know I'm the most expensive in the market, um, but I'm also the most feature packed and the, a lot of the expense is literally all the pieces on this board to get this put together and working along with the connector and pins and stuff that come along with it. So um, with that said, uh, I thank you if you've made it to this far in the video, thank you for watching. Um, if you are interested, as I said, these will be available on my website. Um, go to twistedbuilds.com, go to my store and pick one up today. Um, these, oh, very important note, these are getting built to order. So uh, I stock the PCB boards. So if you see them on my website and see how many are in stock, that's how many of the PC bo PCB boards I have in stock. Um, and if you order one, it's going to be roughly a two to three week lead time because I am building them to order. Reason being is I am not kidding. These are not cheap to produce. I don't foresee a lot of these getting sold um, because of that, because it's kind of a development tool. Um, so because of that, I don't plan on stocking, like stocking pre-assembled pre ones. Um, I actually just got done at time of recording. I literally just got done building one for a customer that emailed me uh, that watched my last engine sim video uh, and reached out and wanted one. So. Um, as I said, I am building these to order. You're looking at a two to three week lead time. I keep the boards in stock. If the board, if I run out of boards, um, the those will get ordered immediately because there's some lead time on that. The rest of the parts are readily available for my supplier. It's just a matter of getting them mailed in and then getting the boards made and um, tested. So, and I test every single thing on these boards before they ship to make sure they are good to go for my customers. So again, um, as I said, these are being built to order, but uh, 425 shipped to your door if you're in the United States. Um, and if you have any other questions, uh, just reach out. Oh, um, the pinout diagram for this connector, the TE 60 pin connector, is going to be downloadable as a PDF on my website. I also print out a sheet and include it in the box that the engine sim comes in. So. All right, I guess that's that. So if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. If you're interested, go to twistedbuilds.com and uh, put your order in today. And hey, thank you. Have a good day. Bye.